Okay, so you join me here at the wonderful Hillview Fisheries. Uh, it's near Tewkesbury, I think. Uh, right near the motorway, ideal place for us to come and film. Um, what we're doing today is, obviously I've never fished this lake, and quite often when I'm fishing qualifiers and doing various matches around the country, I don't get to fish the lake that I'm gonna fish. So today I'm just gonna run you through how I approach sort of a new venue really, um, and how I decide how I'm gonna fish. Um, so I'm gonna run you through how I'm gonna plumb up, the baits I've taken with me, how I'm gonna approach you know, a, a lake that's sort of new to me. I've never fished this lake before. Um, so yeah, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll catch a few fish and I'll show you how I approach a new venue. Right, so we're at a completely new lake to me. Uh, I've never fished it, but before I decide how I'm gonna approach it, the most important thing on a new venue or a new lake is plumbing up, because that that sort of makes me decide what baits I need, what rigs I need, and how I'm gonna approach the peg. So plumbing up is really important. Obviously, it's, I'm presuming it's gonna be a, a sort of standard commercial, really, and most commercials, you, I go to around the country a sort of five, six foot down the middle. So, you know, a 414 is a good starting point. So the first rig I normally put on is a 414 maggot. Nice carbon stem. You know, there's no wind today. I don't really need a wire stem or anything like that. A carbon stem does everything. It's nice, it doesn't tangle. So a 414 is a good starting point for me. Plummet wise, I normally start on a 30 gram and then uh, fine tune it with a, a 20 gram. The 30 gram allows me to find out where the silt, are, where the silt is, because you, you can either drop it from a height and it will be stuck in the silt, or you can lower it in gently. Sometimes you can feel it like that. So, obviously short poles is uh, normally a good starting point to find out the contours of the lake. So if we ship straight out to like six metres, I can feel that it's quite silty out there. It's probably, what we at, five foot deep, so it was a good guess. About five foot deep there, but we're straight into the silt there. Um, and I'm presuming it's gonna be sort of flat from then on, uh, out into the middle, but I'll obviously check that. Sometimes you might find there's a, you know, a gravel bar or a sunken island, so it's always worth checking around your peg but that's straight into the silt there. So what I do then is come back. So we're about five meters there. Get, got a little bit firmer there. We go five meters at an angle and I can feel that that's hard. My plummet's not getting stuck. Reasonably flat. So I'm straight away, I'm thinking that's the area I want to start on. Nice hard bottom, reasonably flat. I'm not going to get problems with like fizzing and fish disturbing the silt. It's going to stay the same depth. I'm going to be able to feed bait on that without, you know, you know sometimes you, if you feed bait in the silt, foul workers can be a problem. The depths can change a little bit where they disturb the silt. So always look to find the hard bottom. So that's, that's definitely a line that I'm going to fish right there. There we go. It's coming up slowly. So there we're about a foot shallower not too sort of a, an aggressive slope. It's quite a nice place to fish. So I'm thinking that's going to be another spot I'm going to fish to as well. So I'm thinking straight away, maybe start on pellets on that longer line. And then on the shorter line, we could either fish hard pellets again, or we could fish like other baits sort of like meat or maybe maggots. So that's a, a great sort of line closer into you, bit shallower water. It's not as far for the fish to go down onto. And maybe later on in the day, that would be the line that sort of produces, really. But I think if this was a match, I'd start a bit further out, see what happens. And then I can also go on to this line. So I'll have a rig for each, definitely. Um, 
And like I said, on the longer line, if bites are a bit harder to come by, just check the depths out there. So this is same depth as that five meter line. Yeah, at 13 meters, it's silty out there and there's only an inch difference. So I could probably get away with the same rig for both lines. I'll need another rig for that shorter line. I think because we've got a nice ripple and it's quite warm, I'll also set a shallow rig up. So I'm gonna set up a four by 10 carp shallow um, and I can fish pellets with that. And you know, I've got a few casters with me, not quite enough to fish shallow with, but we could fish shallow with it for a bit. But we'll, we'll start off with pellets and then we've got casters as a backup if it gets red hot. Sometimes you can, you can catch quite well on commercials feeding casters instead of pellets, but that obviously depends on the amount of silverfish that are in this lake. We, we don't know that yet. So by starting on pellets, you know, if we get the odd silverfish on that, it tells me that casters maybe aren't, aren't the way to go. But we come prepared, we've obviously got maggots, casters, could even fish a bit of meat out there, maybe kinder a bit of meat is quite silty by the feel of it. Obviously we don't have to fish one line, I could go off at an angle, just try things throughout the day. But I can set up a little meat line, see what happens. Um, but I think on most commercials, the first point of call is pellets really so we'll have a hard pellet line for each to begin with obviously i'll change my hook lengths and change bait throughout the day it's not a problem i can put a quick stop on with a little hair and fish meat or i could fish baits like worms just hooking them onto onto a spade hook just takes a few seconds to swap and change hook lengths so there there's the sort of open water lines if you like and I've also got the margins to think about. I'm guessing it's going to be relatively deep. So luckily I've already got a 4x12 carp shallow. Hopefully there's enough line on it. And again, the most important thing is plumbing up before I decide what baits and how I'm going to fish it, you know. I'm expecting it to be quite deep. You can see there straight away, we're straight in. That's probably two and a half foot, which is a, a reasonable depth, but um, lighter baits. Obviously the rules here at Hillview are, um, we're not allowed ground bait, but if, if we were on another venue and I had sort of a foot, foot of water down the edge, I might be looking to fish ground bait. But that sort of depth, I'm thinking, well, I could fish two meal pellets there um, and fish like a bigger bait on the hook, like a worm um, or a piece of meat. And we, I'll probably start off doing that, but if line bites become a problem, it's reasonably flat there, um, which is a good thing. Um, if line bites become a problem on that line, I could feed baits like corn because they're a bit heavier get wafted around a bit less and they pin the fish on the bottom. You know, if it was deeper than that, sort of three, four foot, I'd definitely look to fish meat or corn, bigger particles, get the fish down on the bottom. That's sort of a nice medium sort of depth down there that I'm going to start off probably just feeding micro, see if we can get bites over that. But also maybe I've got a few dead maggots with me. That might be a nice sort of depth to fish dead maggots in, sort of a, either with a big pot or um, a big kinder pot. But again, it depends on the silverfish. So we have to get fishing before we sort of make that decision, really. But yeah, that's it, really. So we've got a short line there, a pellet line just on the edge of the hard bottom. Obviously, we've got open water out there and we've got the margins. They're the sort of key areas I'm going to look to fish. And uh, yeah, hopefully we catch a few fish on them lines. I'll, uh, I'll run you through the bait I've got with me. So now we've plumbed up. As I've mentioned, I've got a few key areas that I'm going to target to begin with. Um, I've settled on a few rigs. Um, like I said before, I had a 4x14 uh, maggot float, carbon stem, elastic choice. Um, I don't actually know how big the fish are in here, to be fair. But on most commercials I go to, um, I start with 11 or 13 hollow. So we've got 11 hollow in my open water lines. I've got 13 hollow for my edge rig. 
Um, so 017 power line main line, go to nice and durable. We can start on sort of 011 hook lengths and step it up depending on how big the fish are really. Um, really simple to begin with. I've just got a bulk and two droppers, um, but I can change that throughout the day when I get started. I can spread it out, try and catch a few fish on the drop, but it depends how the fish are feeding. Um, but to begin with, it's just a nice positive bulk and two droppers. And then I've got a hook length of 011 to an 18 GPM. And on this rig, this is my hard pellet rig for about five meters. I've got a band on the hair there. I'm not really fussed about taking expanders my peg. Obviously it does depend on the venue, but really I think hard pellets are gonna be the way to go. Might be wrong. Um, so that's that rig. I've got the same rig again for up the slope a little bit in a foot shallower water. So this rig's probably five and a half foot. The next rig will be about four and a half. So it's the same rig again, but all I've got to begin with is a 16 GPM hook uh, with some 013. Sort of expecting a few bigger fish on this line maybe, or it, I might be wrong and there might be a load of F1s in this lake. I think it's carp and F1s, but I don't know what, what we're fishing for really until we get started. Um, I should have done my homework really. <laughs> And to be fair, if you do go on a new venue, it is worth asking at least what fish are in the lake because then it, it gives you a bit of a head start then. But we've left it, we've been quite relaxed today and we've, we've left it sort of for us to sort of find out if you like. Uh, so I've set my shallow rig up. Obviously we can do a bit of anything with this. I've got a long line to begin with and I've got a band on the hair again. We can start with hard pellets, um, but I've got maggots and casters with me depending on the silver of the fish, whether we can get away with it. If there's a lot of F1s in the lake, casters might be a good option. So we can change that rig. I could band the caster on that, no problem. But I'm thinking hard pellets is probably the way to go. And then lastly, I've got a margin rig, um, 13 hollow, expecting a few bigger fish. If they are a bit monstrous, I can step it up to a 15, but 13 is a good starting point on any venue. Um, 019 main line, I don't think there's many stags, but there's a few platforms and bits of bobs. And all I've got there is a bulk above a hook length of 015, and I think that's a 14, can't remember the name of the hook. Go on, Zolt. Quick, quick. Ah, XSO2, there we go, Zolt's helped me out, XSO2. Nice sort of big round hook and get big baits like meat or a bunch of maggots on the hook. It's a great hook for that. Um, obviously, depending on what fish we catch, we can step down to a, a GPM hook and fish maggots for F1s or whatever, really. Uh, the only other point I'm going to make is um, I'm using long kits today, so my normal power kits. Um, obviously, on a lot of ven F1 venues I go to, I use a short kit because this is a bit of an unknown, I always like to start on a longer kit. Um, just gives me a bit more stretching elastic. So if I do hook something big, like a 10 pound carp, that just gives me a bit more stretch. And uh, yeah, I mean, the next time I go to the venue or halfway through the match, I can sw switch over to a short stop. But because we don't know what's in the lake, I always fish a longer kit when there's a few carp involved. So there are my rigs. Run you through the baits we've got on the side tray. Obviously, um, we're a bit limited to what we can use today because of fishery rules. So we've got fishery pellets. We're not allowed any ground bait, which is fine. No additives are allowed. Um, but we've got these fishery pellets. We've got some twos, fours, and sixes. I think they're sort of, I think they might be sort of halibut trouty sort of pellets, which is great because I. Catch loads of fish on that, carp love them. Uh, and they're normally quite heavy, so they're quite ideal for catching on the bottom. So that should be good. I'm gonna probably start on six mils because they're a bit of a nicer shape. Um, and to be fair, I'll probably feed by hand to begin with. I'm not really expecting to use a cab pot too much. I just wanna feed some bait, make plenty of noise. And uh, hopefully we'll catch plenty of fish doing that. Other options, obviously I've got some meat with me um, and some corn. I can swap and change these pellet lines to, you know, hook in a cube of meat. Um, 
if it's really hard, I can feed these micros and fish a bigger bait like corn or meat over the hook, um, or just fish, feed meat. It, it's, it's, it's all, I'm waiting for the fish to tell me what's best really on the day. Um, but pellets are a good starting point. Like I said before, I've also got a few dead maggots with me and casters. Casters, I could feed a few shallow. I haven't got loads with me today, so a bit limited by that. But I've got plenty of dead maggots with me, so if, uh, you know, I'm probably going to start off feeding these micros down the edge and fishing a cube of meat or corn over the top. I've got some worms, nice big bait. But uh, if I feel I can get away with feeding maggots, I'll try that as well because fish just love maggots. Um, and I don't think it's too deep down the edge to catch on them. So there are my bait options, running through my rigs. I think it's time to get fishing. Right, the sun's just coming out for us. Like I said before, I'm just going to start on this pellet line, about five metres out, just into the deeper water, but importantly, it's on a harder bottom. So I'm just going to grab one of these six mil fishery pellets. Not going to feed anything before I ship out. I'm just going to ship out. And then I'm going to try and make a bit of noise just by feeding sort of five, six pellets around the float. Try and be accurate. There we go, just a nice bit of noise. Lower my rigging over the top. And there's a little indication there, might have been a small silver fish. Nice bit of ripple actually, it's just started. And just as the sun's coming out, there looks to be like a, there's a few sort of F1s on the top, but there's also, it looks, looks like an albino grass carp, it's massive. Salt's call it Bob. I'm not sure about that name, but Ooh, a line bite. Like I said before, I've got a shallow rig, so it does come close to us. Um, there's a bit of sort of line above the float, a few foot that we can sort of swing a rig out and try and catch them if we uh, do get a few fish like that come in. It'd be nice to catch that thing because it's bright yellow and it's huge. So this is a line I'd normally expect to catch on, on any sort of fishery really, but by starting short, typically you can have a look around you at the other anglers before you feed your other lines and see what's going on, before you sort of potentially make a few mistakes. That's a little dig then. I've got a bulk on this rig at the minute, but I think I'm better off spreading it out. It's how I normally fish hard pellets, just to sort of spread spread a bit of shot. That one had it on the drop actually, held it up. Ooh. So I, I fish with a bit of elastic hanging out from my bead there, just in case we hook a big fish and it tears off like that. Just gives you a bit more cushion, a bit more elastic to play with. That one feels absolutely huge. <laughs> pulled out of it. See that elastic was just held in with that tight bead not snapped me but potentially it might have been foul hooked because it was sort of held up as it was sort of lowering in there so maybe it was sort of on top of a fish rather than a bite but it's all sort of encouraging really indication straight away even though we've not caught it so obviously a few fish coming to the feed so we'll stick with it so when I hook that fish, I threw a few pellets in, so hopefully there's a, a fish or two waiting. In fact, because that fish potentially had it on the drop, I'm just going to spread this out, like I said. I'm just going to put them sort of a couple of inches apart. I think they're number 10s, actually. And now I've got a few further apart, three droppers just so we can catch a few fish on the drop potentially. I've got two number eights above the float as back shot because there is a bit of a breeze on and off today. Just 
hold the rig in place. I'm getting quite a few indications there. I said before, I didn't really want to feed with a cab pot, but potentially if we are getting a lot of line bites and fish sort of coming up to the feed, it might be a good option sort of to sneak the feed past without sort of drawing them up in the water by loose feeding. It might be that um, we have to try and target shallower water if uh, if we do start falcon a few fish, and the short shorter line might come into play, sort of a top kit and one. Odd fish cruising around now. The sun's come out. You can see that ghost carp. Well, it's not a ghost carp. I think it's a massive grass carp. He's just sat there enjoying the sun. A bit hard to catch grass carp, so there's a little indication then. That might be an F1 or something. Oop. Silver fish, I think. Hair's just folded around there. Beauty of hard pellets, you can keep the bait on there. You don't have to change. A bit more resilient when silver fish are around. Just keep the bait going in. See quite a few fish cruising around now, so it might be that shallow fishing's the way to go. Got a little bit of ripple there, which is something that I you know, keep my eye on. If I draw a peg with a bit of ripple, there's always a chance that you're going to catch shallow. They've just got a bit more confidence when you've got a bit of ripple there. I don't think the pole spooks them so much when you've got a bit of ripple, just a bit more cover. Getting quite a few indications. Might be that we need to feed a bit of, a bit more of a volume of bait in one go, just sort of pin them on the bottom. So I'm not feeding too much to begin with because I just don't want to blow my peg straight away and feed the wrong bait. Just had a line bite from a fish up in the water, so all these things are telling me, actually a fish follows it down there, I'm going to load it in. It's telling me that fish want to be up in the water. And this line might be a bit too deep. Oh, no, that's a silver fish. It's a good job of fishing hard pellets. It might be that we need to feed a bit more then. Maybe they're silver fish. Let's try feeding a couple of times. Try and be a bit more accurate. Try and pin the fish on the bottom. I can see a few silver fish spooking off there. So they're obviously having it before it got to the bottom. So it's all things I'm learning. There's a few silver fish. And straight away I mentioned that I had casters with me and this pellet line has already told me that I've probably not got enough casters with me to fish shallow. Because I can actually see a few with my sunglasses on the odd silverfish under the water. So I think if I'm going to fish shallow out long it's going to be with pellets. There we go, that was a nice positive bite. I'm just going to feed a few. Ready for the next one. Don't think it knows it's hooked yet. Not sure how big it is, but that 11 hollow is sort of ideal for anything we do hook. There we go. What have we got? Take my times as the first fish, we don't know what it is. Yeah, I love 11 hollow for most commercials because if you do hook something monstrous, there is a lot of stretch in it. And it just gives you a bit of time to land anything you do hook. Should keep a few pellets going in on that line. Interesting to see what we've got. Oh, there we go. Nice mirror carp. So, supposed to be a few carp in here. 
nice chunky fish, probably five, six pounds, so well worth catching. Let's see what else we can catch. Hoping there's a few sort of F1s in here as well. We'll have to see. So I'm just going to repeat the process. Six mil pellet on the hook. So we just fed that line, but see if we can catch another. The beauty of just sort of loose feeding that one line is you can keep it going. You can fish other lines, or when you do hook a fish like that. You can keep the bait going in, ready for the next one. The liner straight away then. Just having to lift the rig and drop it again because it's moving it from side to side. So there's a few fish there, which is good. Oh, there we go. So this is encouraging. So I'm glad I started on the six mils now. I like to start on six mil pellets if I don't know the venue. You can always change if it's not working, so you drop down and change things throughout the day, nothing set in stone. You're just letting the fish tell you what's right. This one might be an F1 actually. Ooh, it was an F1. What's happened there? And just pulled out of that one. So I pulled out of that fish, it might be that I didn't get a nice hook hold, so. Obviously we had a carp before that, so importantly I'm going to plumb up again, just to double check my depths are the right, are right. Um, it might be that the float moved. There we go. I reckon that float's moved a little bit when I caught that carp, so I'm just going to move it about five mil deeper. It might be that we get a better hook hold then. It's really important to keep plumbing your depths and when you do lose a few fish to sort of make sure that you're doing things right. Because you've got a nice sort of positive rig really. Four by 14 in that depth, not got any wind. Hook sharp as well, so we'll check that. Obviously we're not going to land every fish but there are little things we can do to make sure we do. So I'm confident now that I'm fishing the right depth. And if my rig does sort of go beyond the pole tip a little bit, I've got a bit more, a bit more line there to keep in contact with the bottom. So I've been fishing this five metre line for a little while and I've noticed a few things. Um, so there's a few silverfish there, so some nice ropes actually. I'd like to come back in winter and fish casters, but some nice ropes on that. So I think hard pellets is a sort of decent start. But the problem is on this line, because it's quite deep, I'm getting a lot of liners and fish coming up in the water. And I just feel like I need to sort of target shallower water. I think the shallow line, if I start feeding that later on, that'd be really good. But I think on this line, I've made the mistake by starting in too deep for water. So obviously I've got a rig for top four. So I think what I'm gonna do now I'm just getting the line bite then. But what I'm going to do now is going to pick that rig up and I'm going to change the hook to a band on here like I've got on this rig. Um, my initial thoughts was to fish sort of maggots and meat on that line, but I think with the sort of silver fish that I have caught um, and seen, I think hard pellets is still right, but I'd like to have a go in some shallower water. So if you look at that, it's just over four foot. And I just think I'd bite that spade hook off. I just think targeting, it, targeting that line with hard pellets is going to be much better than where I was fishing. Um, so I'm going to pick a size 18, oh 11. Obviously we'll step it up to 13 and we do hook a lot of carp. I'm looking around now, there's a ghosty right there and there's a few fish cruising around in the sun. So I think shallow fishing is probably the way to go. And I think they'll be in the edges later in this warm weather. But I just want to prove to myself that I should have started in some slightly shallower water. Obviously, if this was a match, I'd still be trying to catch a few fish short to begin with. I'm just catching what I can. 
The thing is on this line, is you always get a few fish straight away close in on commercials. Pellets is always a good starting point. But what you can do then, when bites do dry up, you can change to other baits and sort of target it later on in the session. So, you do the same again. A few pellets around the float. Much shallower this time. So it's obvious the fish are sort of up in the water cruising around. It just means that they don't have to go so far to get to the bottom and get to where my hook bait is. And I just feel like this line's probably the better line to target really. We could even come closer again and fish a top kit, but I think in a match situation, this would be the sort of line you sort of look to fish for, fish on. Hopefully we get a lot less liners on this, on this line and uh, we can catch much quicker too. So while I'm fishing this line, I think my next point of call after this, once we catch a few fish, is to sort of fish shallow. So while I'm fishing this line, I'm going to be pinging a few pellets sort of on the longer line. And because we've had a few issues with sort of, oh, there we go, foul to fish on the other line. There's a bream, that one. So obviously a few silvers in here. So obviously we've had a few problems on the other line, which means really when I start targeting the longer line, I don't really want to catch on the bottom or try and catch on the bottom because I think I'll have the same issues there. And I have noticed when I've been feeding pellets that there have been a few sort of F1s and carts swirling on the top. So I think a day like today, really, to catch a big weight, I think it's going to be by fishing shallow. Hopefully this shorter line can come good for a few fish. Obviously I've learned a bit by fishing that other line. Hopefully this line comes good. It's always a bit more awkward feeding on the top four. Oh. So we've got the same size float, so it's a bit, it's nice and positive. I'm direct with my hook bait. sure if I can hold that one up but it's probably about seven pound maybe a bit more so making that change just sort of into a shallower water sort of made a bit of a difference there brought me a bigger fish less liners and uh, yeah I'm confident I made the right choice there so we'll catch a few fish sort of on the, this pellets, on, on the fishery pellets, sort of six mils. Catch what we can. And then we've also got the option of sort of changing this line to other baits, feed meat on this line. Meat's a great choice for catching sort of bigger fish, especially later on in the session. Got a nice bit of ripple there as well, coming towards me. So I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna start pinging that longer line. I'm just going to keep my eye on it, look out for a few swirls and fish feeding. And then we've, we've got two lines on the go sort of simultaneously. We can swap and change between the two. Hopefully we catch a few fish shallow. 
and this is all, you know, a line I can feed throughout the day, drop it on, catch the odd fish. But typically, when you come later on in the session, and the fish start feeding a bit more confidently, this sort of line that you can feed by hand and is close in against the bank is where you sort of catch the big weights on a lot of commercials. So even if I wasn't really catching here, I'd still keep a bit of bait going in, even if I didn't know the venue. Sometimes just trickling a bit of bait in, you can get a good run come the last hour. Just gonna keep pinging a few pellets on that long line. I can see a few fish cruising around, so I think we'll catch on it. I'm gonna stick on this line until the bite sort of slow down. We could swap and change the meat, just for a bit of curiosity really. Some venues are really switched on to it, but I think because there are a few sil sort of silver fish here, I think pellets is right. So we're still on the short line, and uh, I've noticed bites have sort of dried up a little bit. I've just switched the meat, um, and to be honest, I don't think it's quite right. There's a lot of silver fish and big rud. But what I have just hooked is this great big F1. So I think it's an F1. So it might be a line that I sort of feed throughout the day and hopefully bigger fish like this rock up. So I think if this was a match, I'd probably stick to feeding meat, even though I've had a few fish on pellets. But what I'm really keen on doing is fishing out shallow out there warm muggy day and I think most of these fish are up in the water so that's what I'm going to do next and I think if I was coming back to this venue the only other thing I might sort of bring in my armory is a pastry because I think it's that sort of venue there's a lot of silver fish and I think just by feeding it a bit more positively and by fishing paste it might be the way forward but that's a lovely great big F1 that one so, let's see if I can hold it up. There we go. Great big chunky fish. I think if we go out shallow now, there's a nice ripple out there. Odd fish swirling, swirling. I think we might get a few shallow. So, let's put that fish back. Whoop. And then we'll Try shallow. Been feeding it for a while. Just with these six mil pellets I was catching on earlier. Only fishing about 13 meters, I think. Keep some bait going in, just sort of half a dozen pellets all the time. Try and get the fish competing. And rig-wise, like I said before, I've got a four by ten cup shallow. Reasonably long line because it's a bright day. Keeps going a bit flat, so I don't want to spook them with a pole tip. Starting around 18 inches, got no shot down the line to begin with. Because um, I think we're fishing for proper fish like that big F1 we've just caught along with a few carp. Um, so I don't want too much shot down the line. You know, if it was a sort of out and out F1 venue, I might like to fish with you know, a four inch hook length and a bit of shot reasonably close to the hook to sort of register bites and help me hit bites but I think when you're fishing for bigger fish I think the best thing to do a lot of the time is just to fish no shot down the line so we're starting off around 18 inches to begin with let's put the pole together keep some bait going in it's just gone flat typically there's also a bit of fizz going on out there so it's obviously a few fish stirring well there straight away you can see the odd fish cruising around as well so I'm just going to flick it amongst the feed not going to slap my rig just going to keep flicking it in it's important when you're fishing up in the water to keep the bait dropping through there's a bite could have been anything that so yeah rather than fishing a static bait which is unnatural really. The fish are feeding on pellets that are hitting the water and dropping down through the column. So it makes sense to replicate that. Oh, 
might have been a rudd or a roach. Caught some big rudd today. I bet it's brilliant in the winter. Old fish cruising around as well. Oh. What's that? Might be a big silver fish. See a few F1s cruising around. What's this one? Oh, there's an F1. Oh, it's just come off. Let's check my hook. I'm going to change my hook bait as well because these pellets are quite heavy. It does help to have a fresh bait when you're fishing shallow. Slightly slower fall. Because I've lost that fish as well, I'm just going to shallow up about two inches because it's quite a quick bite. I've obviously not got a decent hook hold on it. So it's all changes we make and learn throughout the day. I'm going to keep some bait going in. It's gone flat now, which isn't really ideal for shallow fishing, but hopefully we can get a few. Well, there, so they're, they're coming to the bait. So keep it dropping through. Keep the bait going in. Great thing about six mil pellets, they make plenty of noise. There we go. Shallowed up, and I'd, I've hit that bite straight away. No missed bites. So we're learning, and I think a day like today is going to be all about shallow fishing, but obviously depending on how late we stay, I'm expecting the margins to come good as well. I, th I think I'm a little bit reluctant to feed maggots down there because we have found we're catching a lot of silverfish, so I think we'll either feed micros to begin with and then we, maybe we can switch the baits like corn. Nice chunky F1. There's little changes like that. This hooks properly in the top lip this time. Make all the difference sometimes, a couple inches. Can mean the difference between hitting sort of two or three bites or hitting every bite. Just gonna pick out a nice chunky size pellet. One of the bigger ones. There we go, the wind's kicking up a little bit now. It should be, it should be better with a bit of ripple. Keep the bait going in, keep the fish competing for it. Typical English weather, we've gone from bright sunshine. Looks like a thundercloud over there. Hopefully we won't get wet. The winds make it a little bit awkward now, so I'm just gonna slap it over the pole to keep the line tight. So I've got the sun, when it is out, off to my left. So I'm trying to keep my pole off to the right, so the shadow and my pole's away from the fish. Nice chunky F1. Nice little weight builders. So 
There's obviously a few fish competing for the feed now. The only trouble is it does keep going flat. But at least we have got a bit of ripple now and again. Making sure I feed a bit of bait before I go out there, get the fish confident again. Flip the rig in amongst it. A little indication there straight away. So I've been catching them fish sort of in amongst the feed really, but see I've got the option to flick around the edge of the swim, off the back of the feed. Sometimes you catch a few bigger fish doing that. It's obviously the way to go though, because there's plenty of fish swirling and stuff whenever I do feed. I think we've had a month or so where it's been really sort of wet and windy and these fish are making the most of a bit of sunshine. But if we were to come on another day I expect the fishing would be completely different so it doesn't always pay to sort of know the venue. Every day is different even when you think you know how you're going to catch. Fishing always throws a few surprises. I'm missing a couple of bites now, so it might be this sort of silver fish, or it might be that I'm fishing too deep. Another missed bite. But there are a lot of big sort of roach and rud in this lake. And they'll think of nothing of snapping up a six mil pellet, I've just spooked a carp then. Got a few baby ducks in the peg as well that are spooking them. It isn't ideal. I'm not going to give it too much longer and then I'm going to shallow up a bit more, I think. So we missed a few bites. That carp's trying to eat my float, so he's obviously a lot shallower. When you go to a new venue, it's always paying, worth paying attention to the rules. Some fisheries have funny rules about fishing shallow. Some have got minimum or maximum distances between floats and hooks and whatever so a lot of the time you're sort of limited by the rules sometimes but luckily there aren't too many rules at this fishery I think what I'm going to do now shallow up another couple of inches Because there are quite a few F1s, I'm actually going to slide one of these shot down the line a little bit by the hook length, just to give me a bit more, sort of, a bit more, you know, it's more likely to register on the float when I do get a bite, and I'm more likely to hook F1s like that with a, just a shot down the line. There we go. There's another change and we're into a fish. Typically me talking about F1s, I think I've just hooked the carp instead. <laughs> but. Not really fighting yet, could be anything. I think while we're catching on this line, it's probably worth feeding the margins now, just to sort of get it going, get it kick-started for when we do want to have a look. Obviously, if this was a match, you'd be sort of reluctant to come off this line because we're catching on it, but we could keep, the, keep our eye down the edge. It's a little bit too deep to sort of see tails and stuff, but we should be able to see if it gets coloured up. Sometimes you just sort of... And then snap me up. Broke me. It's obviously a rock down there. Seem to go solid and then kick off, so I think we'll step it up to 013 this time. Go for a 16 as well. So 
It's not ideal losing fish, but it takes a few lost fish and a few missed bites to sort of tell you you're not doing things right. Make a few changes. Got a slightly thicker line and a bigger hook. I think the elastic is doing fine because we are catching F1s and the old calf on it. So just step up our hooks a little bit. Like I said before, I'll probably catch a couple more fish on this and then I'll start feeding the margins, keeping my eye on it, see when it gets coloured up. And uh, hopefully we catch a few fish down the edge to finish what has been a brilliant day, really. There we go, we made a few changes, I've just shallowed up even further and I've switched to a four inch hook length with a bit of shot above my hook length. It does seem to be that there are a lot of F1s feeding shallow and by having that sort of bit of shot above the hook length just means I hit a few more bites and it's obvious these fish are quite shallow today, sort of less than a foot deep. There we go, nice chunky F1. And I think if I went back to this venue, next time I'd come prepared with a few short kits for fishing shallow. Just means you can land fish like this a bit quicker. And they come in close to your feet, just easier and quicker, more efficient. And at the end of the five hours, that makes all the difference sometimes. So. Well, we're still catching a few. I'm just going to feed the margins. You never know, we might get a few monstrous fish coming down the edge later on. Keep some feed going in. Um, and like I said before, I have got a load of maggots with me. Might be an option, but there are a lot of roach and rud feeding. So at the minute, I'm just going to keep it simple. Just going to feed sort of a handful of these fishery micro pellets. Won't feed any meat in with it at the minute. I'm just going to see. Well, I might I might put a few maggots in. Interesting with it, I think. Just gives me a hook bait option. Obviously, I can try maggots over the top. If I start catching rudd and roach, I can fish baits like meat and corn. But we'll see what happens to begin with. And we'll just keep an eye on it. See if the bottom starts colouring up. So. Plumbed up earlier, I've got my marker, just going to feed nice and accurately. And I'm just going to keep my eye on that. Um, and I've got the option of feeding the other side differently, which is always, always a good idea. So what I might do is feed maggots one side, micros the other. Carry on catching a few fish shallow, and then uh, hopefully we get a few better fish to finish. So, let's see if we can catch a few more fish shallow for the time being. Something quite interesting. I noticed uh, a few fish coming in and out my edge and it coloured up a little bit when I was feeding micros. When I've actually gone onto it with uh, maggots and worms over the top, I've had loads of silver fish. So then I switched it to you know, feeding mainly corn and the fish weren't really coming to it. So I thought, well, I've obviously got that left hand edge. I thought, well, why not just put a big volume of maggots down there? And fortunately, it's worked caught some big carp, some big F1s down there. So um, what I've done, actually I'm looking down there, there's some tails down there now. What I've actually done, swapped the other line over to maggots as well. Haven't tried it yet, but I'm sure 
from the response I've had from this line to my left, it's been really good. So I think, I think that's going to make all the difference now. I was a bit reluctant to feed them because of the amount of small fish and rud we've had on pellets and stuff. But what I've done, obviously I've, I've kicked it off with a big pot, big volume of maggots, but I've actually put a big cab pot on, just filled it with maggots. I've got a bunch of sort of five or six on the hook. And all I've been doing is just putting these maggots in. Just there and then following it with my rig over the top. So I think now there's a few fish that side, I'll definitely catch to the right hand side as well. But obviously a few changes has made all the difference at baits that I didn't really expect to catch on. But um, there's a tail there now. I definitely like the maggots. It just make, means that I've had to feed a little bit more to get through the silverfish. But I think uh, I think maggots is definitely what they want. There we go. Trying to get under the platform. Yeah. Definitely switched on to these maggots now down the edge. Still early on in the day, but it's. Uh, Ooh, going around the corner here. Early on in the day, but they're definitely feeding down there now. Normally sort of three or four o'clock in the summer, they start feeding really well, but we're well before that, so it's really encouraging. I think the last one I had was probably about eight pounds, and this is a bit, a bit of a chunky fish as well. So, Obviously it's a new lake, I didn't really know what we were going to catch. So 13 all over is a good starting point. I've got long kits as well to give me that bit more elastic. And uh, yeah, just covers my options. And make sure that when I, when I do work a big fish, I'm going to land it nice and safely. There we go. It's a nice big common. There's obviously a few big ones in here. And that big yellow thing's coming towards me as well. Looks like a big grass car. So, definitely been interesting fishing. I think we'll have a look the other side. See if we can catch another couple of fish and that'll finish off a great session. Right, so like I said before, we've caught a few fish on maggots that side, but I've also switched it up on the line that I wasn't catching on. And I fed that with maggots too. So we've got a big cab put. All I'm going to do is fill it up. Some maggots. These are just frozen maggots I've had in my freezer for a while. Just defrosted them overnight. And uh, yeah, they've been spot on really. So try and be nice and accurate. You can see a cart there just gone out of the peg turns back. There we go. Just spooked another one. Missed that bite. Started stirring the bottom up as well. So there's, there's a few fish feeding. There we go. Nice positive dink. And uh, we're straight in. So it didn't take too long. So now that we're catching a few fish, I'm just gonna keep ticking over with this big cab pot. Feed after every fish. This bite start to slow up, you can, you know, now I've got two swims, I can put a big pot down one side and leave it alone for a little bit, see if they come back. But uh, yeah, if this was a match now, I'd be well happy. I don't think we got the bait choice quite right to begin with, but it seems that these fish have got a nice taste for maggots. F1 this time. There we 
we go. Nice chunky fish at Hillview. Immaculate looking fish, the mouths are perfect. So let's see if we can get one more fish. Hopefully it's a carp this time. We have had a few monsters, but it'd be nice to finish on a nice big one. So like I said before, got a nice big hook. Great big bunch of maggots. Nice visual bait that they're gonna find easy. Takes a little time to hook up. I'm just hooking them through the tails because that means there's a bit more hook point showing. The only trouble with maggots is sometimes they fold over the point and you can end up losing fish like that when the maggots folded over the point. So same again, fill up my cab pot, cram it full of maggots. My marker I'm gonna line up to. Drop the maggots in nice and accurately. I'm just gonna slowly lower it in over the top. Obviously you got them maggots falling through the water, I'm expecting a few line bites straight away, but I'll try and get my hook bait in amongst that feed. I'm just waiting for a nice positive pull under. Trying to ignore the sort of bites from side to side. I'm not sure if that was a a proper bite or not. No, it wasn't. Just going to check the point of my hook, see if it's showing. Because I've only just fed, I'm going to see if I can still catch one on that bit of feed rather than pile two lots of feed in. Hopefully they've settled down a bit now. I've just got a bulk above my hook length, nice and positive. Four by 12 cut shallow. Potentially you could use a four fourteens if there was a lot of fish there. That's gone down. I'm just waiting for a nice positive sharp bite. Not too many silver fish there anymore. I think it was a case of sort of feeding them off a little bit. Now we're feeding sort of maggots as well. They're sort of leaving us alone a little bit. There we go. So we made a few changes. Obviously it's early on in the day, but they're coming in the edges. Now we're feeding the right baits. So definitely learned a few things about this venue today. If we come back, we definitely uh, definitely take some maggots with us. Maybe some gear to catch F1 shallow. But I think if this was a match, big fish like this would make all the difference really. Especially since we're catching them this early on in the day. But nonetheless, we've had a brilliant day here at Hillview. Definitely come back again. Nice location near the motorway. Even got some holiday lodges on site, tackle shop, cafe. Lovely bit of grub in the morning. So uh, if you're interested in a new venue, then uh, it's well worth a visit. Just gonna take my time with this one. Feels like a big fish. Nice big head nods. Oh yeah. Here it comes. Oh yes. Well, probably the biggest fish of the day and probably a nice one to finish on. Oh, <laughs> yeah, it might be 10 pound that one. So, uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. Might try risk holding it up for you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the Preston YouTube channel. And uh, see you next time. Cheers.